Right. One more time for Will Power though, real quick, man. Clap it up, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? You know what's kind of funny is, uh, you know, we're obviously we do a lot of producers, you know what I'm saying? So, producers, y'all always in the studio, always behind the scenes, always making beats. And then we pull you up on stage out of your element a little bit, you know, and put your face to the name to the music. So it, uh, sometimes it catches people off guard. I know Will, somebody who stays in the studio heavy. Um, but let's do this real quick, man. Will, just let everybody know, like, how, how did you start as a producer? Like, what was your first, I guess, introduction to the production world, man? Um, I started out singing, man. You know, um, when I was a kid, you know, I was in a little group with some homies and stuff, man. We used to run around singing, thinking we was boys to men and stuff like that. And um, I, we had an older guy who took us under his wing, and he was the producer, you know. And he came in, and we went over to his studio, and... You know, I walked in this room and there was all this warm equipment in there, man, and all kinds of great sounds coming out of it. And, you know, immediately, man, I just kind of didn't want to sing no more. I wanted to do what he was doing because he was helping us cultivate what we were trying to do. And, um, you know, not to mention he was doing pretty well because he was a pretty well-known producer at the time. So I, I, I just kind of got into it from there, you know, and um, I just... Uh, that was, that was the move for me, you know? So, all right, so, went from being a singer to being a producer. What was, what was your first piece of equipment that you ever bought yourself? Um, my first piece was a um, Insonic um, MR76, man. I went, uh, I went in, and uh, I got an MPC, of course, you know, but the MR76 was my first piece. Uh, it was kind of dope, man. You know, it was like the first, uh, you know, keyboard that had, like, really dope strings and it was kind of when, uh, you know, the sound started getting realer, the samples in the machines were a little better. You know, all my homies were on ASR-10s, and, you know, so we all just kind of went with Insonic during that time, and it was just kind of dope to have that, so. Put up for Will Power, man, that's from music, man. Big up, big up, big up. So he just told me a little something when, he, when that record was playing, he said, uh, Trump Music Returns is coming out soon, right? Yeah, um, we're looking at uh, March. Uh, for Trump is returns. Uh -oh. I just got the word from Yellow Wolf, and um, we went out to LA a few months back before the tour, and uh, we kind of smashed it, man. So I'm really excited about it. Um, people been kind of waiting to hear that sound again, so we have developed it, and it should be pretty, pretty jamming, man. So how, how did y'all link up? How did you and Yellow, you know, get get into? You, know, you guys have such an incredible chemistry. It sounds like. Musically, I'm sure it's the same in the studio, but how did, how did you guys link up? Yeah, I, um, back in 2000, um, I left South Carolina. I'm from South Carolina, so I, I ran, ran, ran up to New York, man, to try to get on, you know, um, just like most people do, I guess. And um, I ran into Yellow Wolf in the lobby. Um, we were both in the snack room, just kind of chilling. He was there doing something, I was there doing something. And um, we, re we recognized each other's southern accent. And we were the only cats in New York at this particular studio and from the South, man. And so we clicked and like, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes later, man, we was in a studio link. Yeah, locked in, man. And um, the friendship just built, man. I've been, you know, I've been producing for him now, man, since 2000. So like, it's, it's a real friendship. He's family. You know? How many records you guys got together? Man, dude, if I was to drop some of this stuff, man, <laughs> lots of records, though, man. I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to actually have been a part of an artist, you know, the whole growth period, man. Like, I watched him switch up styles. I watched him, you know, you know, come into his image that he's in now. You know, the whole thing, man. I know I know the whole story, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Man. Last year, we had the opportunity to fly the mechanics down from Winning Beast to the Beach uh, 5 to work with Yella. And I can tell you firsthand that, you know, in the studio with Yella, he's a very passionate, you know, artist. Like, he, he was like two records in, and he was like, all right, stop that, put that on repeat and let me write. And that was it. He just heard two beats and he just snapped. How, how, how have you, I guess, either coached him or helped him as an artist, and how has he helped you as a producer in regards to the chemistry you guys have when you create in general? I just think, man, you know, we, we set really high standards, man. Like, he is a perfectionist and so am I. So we've gotten to the point now where it's like, if we both if we're not both jumping around when it's done, then it's just not what it's supposed to be, you know? And um, he's just uh, really particular about what he wants, man. I, I've always appreciated that. Like, he used to really actually get on my damn nerves, man, because we, he would come up from Alabama, 
I live in South Carolina, he would drive that that five, six hour drive, man, and just for days, just be in my ear. You know, pull up another beat, pull up another beat, you know. And that kind of got on my nerves at the time, but I, as time as time went on, you know, I realized what he was doing, man. He was just that passionate about it, and he, he had to rap, man. So that's what I think it is with him, man. He's just, he's the hardest worker I know, man, so.